Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video we are talking once more about the tropics where we have two tropical cyclones that are about to develop. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups as well. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that one of these will become a tropical storm, both of these will become a tropical storm, or none of these will become a tropical storm? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of these for tomorrow's video. Alright, now let's get into this video and we're taking a look at our last thumbnail from our... Uh, last tropical update and all this did happen, but I wanted to mention one thing We had a surprise tropical cyclone kind of develop there in the southern Caribbean just to the north of South America And the reason I want to mention that is because that's going to be one of our upcoming tropical cyclones as well as that Africa one that I had pointed out Josephine still exists as a tropical depression, but it's probably going to fizzle out Kyle has officially dissipated So that's what's happened in the last two days Let's go ahead and look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center and as you can see, this is the location of both of our upcoming tropical cyclones, and they both have a 20% chance of developing within the next two days or 48 hours. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at these individually on their five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Just take a look at the path and the probability of development. All right, so this first one, which was kind of the surprise one I was talking about, has a 50% chance of development. And look, it could either hit Central America there, or if it goes to that little window between the Yucatan Peninsula there and Cuba, that is kind of the sweet spot for storms to head through. Uh, obviously, it is kind of hard for a storm to head directly through that window, but if it does, it should have a very easy time developing in the Gulf. So that would be very interesting. By the way, this storm does have a name. Its name is 97L, Invest 97L. Our Africa system does not have a Invest name yet. It will probably later today. But for now, we're going to call this one 97L. The Africa one, I will just call the Africa Disturbance. All right, now we need to talk about the Africa Disturbance now. And this one has a 60% chance within the next five days of development. And this one's going to be heading generally uh, north westward maybe mostly westward there towards about puerto rico now there's going to be a big big difference whether it heads south of puerto rico or north of puerto rico usually we see these storms have a much easier time developing if they go north of puerto rico if they go south of puerto rico it'll probably take a track similar to 97 l maybe a little bit further north uh so this one would be be possibly a gulf storm or an east coast storm there is a high pressure in place over bermuda so i think that that's an out to sea track is not very likely at this point. I'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for both of these storms, uh, as well as the pressure systems, the spaghetti models for each of these individually, things like that. All right, now, first things first, here's 97L, Invest 97L. As you can see, we do have some lighter whites and grays there, as well as the pinks. That indicates very tall clouds there. So this one does have some nice organization to it. I wouldn't be surprised that if within the next two days, this one becomes a tropical depression, perhaps, uh, just because of how far this one has developed. There is a few things uh, as far as impacts we need to talk about soon. Here is that pressure map here of the kind of Caribbean, the Gulf, and par portions of the Atlantic. There's two high pressure systems that are going to be a key player in this. We have one there for the western Gulf of Mexico, and we have one there uh, near Bermuda. Basically, the only place this one can go uh, is either if it goes south of that high-pressure system, it'll head into Central America, which is also an option, obviously, or it'll kind of go east of that high-pressure system in the Gulf, and it would be heading towards Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or Florida, perhaps passing through Florida and heading out to the southeast coast. That seems like a little bit of a further east option than most of the models think right now. This is all if it actually survives, by the way, because there is some shear in place that I think could cause it some issues. Our second one is also going to come through, again, near Puerto Rico, either just to the north or south of it. If it heads north of it, it would probably head towards the east coast, Florida, or the rest of the east coast. If it goes south of Puerto Rico, it'll probably take the same path as 97L. I hope that's quite clear. Now, here's our spaghetti models for 97L real quick. As you can see, they have it passing actually through that window. There's only a few models on board right now but they have it kind of heading north, curving towards the Florida Panhandle, like I said, is probably a quite legitimate option at this point. 
what we're going to do is we're going to move on and then we're going to take a look at the GFS and the CMC uh, ensemble models for this one, which is just going to give us a more clearer view of what these models think. All right, so here is the GEFS, which is our GFS ensemble model, and you can see that they kind of have it right near the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and heading into the Gulf where it kind of intensifies from that point. You can see it's more of a lighter blue throughout the Southern Caribbean there, but once it enters the Gulf, it becomes perhaps greens or even yellows. That indicates a stronger low pressure center. Uh, so they do have this one entering the Gulf. So I think that that seems like a pretty likely outcome at this point. Here's your Canadian ensemble model, which usually does more funky things oftentimes. And you can see it actually one of a few of them actually have it kind of hitting Haiti and then going North off the Southeast coast. That doesn't seem like a very likely outcome at this point, but I'm not going to say it's impossible. The more likely outcome seems like a Cuba or, you, or maybe a Central America or a Gulf entry for this one. And as you can see, a couple models have that path that I said is probably most likely uh, where it heads maybe towards the Florida a Panhandle, perhaps Mississippi or Alabama. But again, this doesn't mean it's going to survive and get there as a strong tropical storm or a hurricane or anything. There is some things that could hold this one back and really dissipate it. First things first, our shear. It's in a green area right now. You can see it's kind of towards the more middle uh, middle bottom portion there. There's a pretty swirly motion. You can see a lot of white clouds there. That's our 97L, and it's, again, heading generally westward, but you can see there is a red area for the Yucatan Peninsula through to Jamaica and Haiti. That's an area that could potentially eat up the storm as it heads in, though there is a green area after that, which could be kind of a redevelopment zone for this one. There's a lot of question marks here and we're going to need to really watch it closely. Though as we look at dry air, you can see it's going to have probably minimal impacts on this storm because there's a few yellows in the Southern Caribbean, but hardly anything. So this one only really has to battle the shear. Uh, it's going to be heading again westward uh, towards Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, potentially the Gulf afterwards. We're going to need to watch this one closely because there is a bit of shear, but Again, that doesn't always stop these storms. I think this one does have a lot of potential to become a stronger storm. So I'm going to need to talk about this for days to come. Notice our African storm does have a lot more of this dry air to contend with. And that's going to be definitely a factor moving forward. Although this storm does have pretty much similar uh, potential as well. So unfortunately, since the African system is not an invest yet, we do not have any model guidance as far as spaghetti models or intensity guidance yet, but probably by tomorrow we will. So stay tuned for that, obviously. Also, if you're in the Discord server, we have, we have channels for each of these individual systems. I'm sure people will be posting them as soon as they are available uh, in those. So if you're not a member, you can join by clicking the link down below. Uh, so what we do have, though, is our 97L model intensity guidance. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at that. We're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for our African system. And then we're going to take a look at our cone forecast from direct weather for both of these systems. And then we're going to end the video. All right. So here is our intensity guidance for 97 L as you can see, they keep it quite weak. Although again, like I mentioned before, I do see the potential for within the four, next 48 hours, we see a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Those two higher models there probably seeing the same things I'm seeing. Uh, usually when a storm is very weak like this, the models are very iffy with the intensity. As you can see, there's a very large gap between what the models are thinking right now. I expect that within the next 24 hours, we're going to get a much clearer view and a much more agreement between all of these models, as well as more models just being on board with this one. We will have more options and more things to look at. As of right now, there's about a, I would say 60% chance of it at least becoming a tropical storm because we have three that show it becoming a tropical storm, two that show it not becoming a tropical storm. Uh, although, again, more models are going to hop on board. We're going to get a much more clearer view, and they're going to be able to determine what the shear is going to do to that storm uh, pretty soon. Now, here's the satellite imagery for our African system, and it looks pretty good on satellite. Uh, there is some taller clouds in there. This one looked very good when it was heading off the coast of Africa. I showed that in our last tropical update. Uh, this one has high potential. It really just depends what the dry air does to it. But I do think that this one could become our next stronger storm as well as 97L. Both of these storms have pretty good potential to be some of the stronger storms of the season. So we're going to need to really watch those closely. Also note, if you look into Africa there, there is another wave uh, over Africa. I've actually spotted three that are on Africa right now. So the activity is not going to die down anytime soon. We're going to see wave after wave heading off of Africa very shortly. That's that rising air motion I've been talking about. This is the impact you see from that. Many, many tropical waves heading into the Atlantic. It's going to be very active here 
for the end of August. Now let's get into those official cone forecasts here from Direct Weather. Here's Invest 97L. And really, it's not super clear what this one's going to do. As you can see, I don't really have that Haiti impact one as a potential possibility here. I might need to switch that, but I highly doubt this one's going to head north that soon. I think it's either going to hit Central America there and dissipate out. The more south it goes in this cone, the less potential it has. Uh, but if it heads north, either through that gap that I mentioned before, that maybe even hitting the Yucatan Peninsula, it could get back into the Gulf and develop. Uh, but it's very unlikely that it would head straight towards Texas or Louisiana with that high pressure system in place. Uh, but if it heads in between that gap in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba, or potentially even just hitting Cuba and heading back into the Gulf, I think this one will develop very far if it takes that path. And we would really need to watch closely if we're in Florida, Mississippi, or Alabama, because this could potentially pose a threat later on. I don't want to act like this is definitely going to hit those areas as a strong storm. There's a lot of shear in place. There's a lot of things that could hold the storm back. Uh, so I'm, I'm being quite conservative right now with this one. In the coming days, we will know a lot more, like I said before, though. All right, now for our African disturbance, we don't really know a lot besides the fact that it's heading generally westward quite fast. It's going to interact with some dry air at times. It's going to interact with shear at times. We'll have to see how it does with those. And then what's going to be the next thing we're going to need to watch is, is it going to go south of Puerto Rico or north of Puerto Rico? Because again, I mentioned before, that has a lot of differences. If it goes north of Puerto Rico, we are going to have to watch for the Bahamas, Florida, and the East Coast, potentially even the Gulf as well still. If it goes south of Puerto Rico, uh, we're going to need to watch for Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Cuba, Mexico, Central America, or even the Gulf. So there's a lot of things this second wave could do. Uh, and it's going to be interesting tracking it moving forward. I sense a lot of tropical updates coming up, kind of like we had to do uh, back to back for Gonzalo and then Isaias. I see probably a similar outcome for the next two weeks. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think that August or September will have more tropical systems? And uh, Gerard Carter had a wild card here. He said, I think it will get funky in October. Watch. Uh, and I think that's very interesting. Uh, October, it's not impossible for that to be the most active month. And I was actually mentioning to a friend, I have a gut feeling that October might be one of the more uh, impactful months as far as our tropical season goes. Uh, so it's interesting you say that. Anyway, for our patron highlight of the day, I thank you all for being patrons and supporting the channel. We have two diamond patrons, Mad Birds and Mark J. So shout out to you guys. And also shout out to our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. I appreciate all of you for supporting the channel. If you would like to support the channel, you can do so by checking out our Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.